So uh, uh, so today's speaker is uh, Esther Amulin. She is uh, pursuing her PhD in computer information systems engineering at Tennessee State University in Asheville, under the guidance of Professor Lee Q. Uh, broadly, her research is at the intersection of control theory and cybersecurity. And uh, for her PhD dissertation, she is uh, specifically focused on security of network systems. So the work that she's going to talk about today, it uh, started as uh, a summer intern activity at ITI. The collaborative work with Hui Lin and Pigano. And it's been with two summers, and uh, she's going to talk about her approach on using distributed agent-based system for intrusion detection. Uh, all yours, Esther. Okay, all right. Well, thanks, Dr. Shetty. Yeah, like um, he said, um, Esther Amulen, Tennessee State University. So, yeah, we decided to call this project um, Distributed Agent Best Intru um, Intrusion Detection for the Smart Grid. Um, yeah, so, ooh, these are not working. All right, so I will start by just giving a brief introduction of um, uh, just an, an introduction of the idea we we had, like where we're coming from with this um, whole project, and uh, so we're basically looking at the power grid as a large-scale networked control system, um, whose components are inter interconnected through um, a communication network. So, uh, the building blocks of a basic control system. Sorry, this is um, hmm. that was like two slides ahead. So the basic building blocks of a uh, a control system are a controller, uh, the plant, uh, sensors, and actuators. So when we talk about um, a large-scale control system, it's uh, basically uh, just talking with a system whose controllers, plant, the plant, uh, sensors, interact through um, computational infrastructure, uh, like in the figure. So that's a basic idea. and. Um, it, for instance, it's a plant with multiple um, substations and uh, multiple field sensors all um, interconnected. So um, where we're coming from is the fact that envisioned advancements in the power grid into uh, the smart grid will see like um, highly reliable, efficient um, communication technology. So when we look at where the power grid is envisioned to go in coming years, we expect to see advancements in computational infrastructure that will allow for um, reliable communication among um, devices in uh, power systems. So well, a general motivation for our work stems from simply looking at the nature of large-scale um, networked control systems. And the fact that manage management of such systems is uh, mostly centralized. So in a sense that control decisions are made um, by, by a centralized controller. And for the case of a power grid, that will be like the SCADA. So for example, if we look at um, a power grid with uh, the power grid, yeah, it has multiple interacting components. It's intuitive that processing data uh, for all these devices poses large computational burden on the centralized controller and uh, with all the associated problems of like a very um, huge computational burden. Also, substations and field devices span geographic, uh, very large geographic areas. So a centralized controller relies on telemetered data. And telemetered data may or may not be available. Like telemetered data is basically data sent from like very far. So it, it would be there when it's required or, or not. So if um, the centralized controller makes decisions based on partial data, it will come up with an estimate or a model that's, um, you know, that's not quite as accurate. And then um, this will translate into things like modeling errors, sensitivity to failure. And then another thing about the state of a power grid right now is the topology is dynamic, right? So. I'd like to say um, if the centralized control controller relies on telemeter data to assess the operation condition of the power grid, um, it may not have data on like dynamic occurrences within the power grid. For instance, um, if something drops, data is sent, whatever 
estimate the centralized controller will come up with won't depict something that happened during the time this telemeter data was being transmitted. So that's why we're seeing one challenge with centralized management of the power grid is a dynamic topology that's not always known. So now for some power grid op operations, like with emphasis on some, a distributed management solves some of these problems associated with centralized um, control. And um, like I mentioned in the previous slides, advancements in computational infrastructure in the power grid can allow for, for some autonomy in um, operating the power grid, meaning distributed operations can independently and auto, autonomous, autonomously, I think, autonomously work with, um, make decisions, like I guess lower scale decisions. And one of such are things that can be done in a distributed manner is um, intrusion detection. So um, again, looking at distributed paradigms that could potentially solve um, problems related to centralized management, we've, uh, we, we've studied uh, multi-agent systems and then some control algorithms, um, algorithms such as consensus that are robust and scalable and are well studied, they've been proven to work and things like that would be like very desirable paradigms for distributing some applications within the power grid. And then um, again, like I think, I, I don't know if I mentioned this, but um, just relying on telemeter data for centralized control um, adds a lot of latencies in some operations that may be time sensitive. So distributing control or distributing decision making in some of these areas um, will, just ensure that this management is done in a time-bound and computationally um, efficient manner. So yeah, that's uh, the motivation behind our work. Um, so the approach, or basically what we did for this particular project is um, we studied the impact of cyber attacks on the power grid control system. And um, for this project, we specifically looked at or just sought to address false data injection attacks. Um, we also looked at well-studied control systems algorithms that can be adapted to address cyber-related problems. And then we decided that something like a multi-agent system can be used for distributed um, intrusion detection um, of attacks such as um, false data injection attacks within the power grid. So. A multi-agent system would basically comprise um, intelligent agents that would be deployed say, at substations um, and then equipped with capacity to even just uh, like create logic parti logical partitions of a system, um, the capacity to hmm, some feedback like to pull um, IED or RTUs for for data, and um, I'm I'm hearing an echo. I don't know where that's from. Esther, everyone online is muted, so it's got to be okay. coming from your end. Okay. How are you? How are you connected to WebEx? So I'm. Well, it's it's running on my PC, and I'm actually using a headset. I mean, it suddenly just started. I mean, but if everyone is hearing me fine, then I'll just continue. Go ahead and, and try to continue. Um. Okay. Um, are you still getting it? Uh, well, I think it's better. No, I'm not getting it anymore. It's, it's better. Okay, so yeah, as I was saying, uh, we're proposing um, the use of multi-agent systems uh, for detecting intrusions in the power grid. So basically, a multi-agent system would consist of intelligent agents that um, interact autonomously and can be equipped with capabilities such as even just breaking the power grid into logical partitions and uh, 
uh, just having access to RTU and IED data and then process this data in parallel, exchange information among themselves in a time-bound manner and run whatever algorithm they can be allowed to run, you know, at, well, locally where they are and, and just even make decisions like determine if the data they have collected from an RTU or IED um, has been affected by, say, false data or some other attack, and then just be able to um, share this data with their neighbors or and in order to come up with like coordinated results, right? Because basically, if an agent is deployed at a substation, um, this agent will only have access to uh, the substation it, it's locally at and um, maybe those pretty close to it. And that's just the data it sees. And based on that data, it would make decisions. But um, we know that the power grid is highly interconnected and something occurring at one point of the grid will affect a far end. So if we have agents that have a very like timely and efficient, like a, a timely fashion or just a very efficient way to um, share data, we could be we could coordinate results by agents or from agents that um, run all these very complex algorithms for like a very small uh, part of a grid, which they would obviously do faster. They would do it accurately, like basically just avoiding all the problems we've um, discussed associated with um, a centralized management. If they can do that, and then be able to coordinate their results with other agents using an algorithm, say consensus, uh, then they can come up with like just an accurate picture or just an accurate assessment of the operational health of the power grid without having to constantly um, just overwhelm the SCADA system and things like that. So yeah, that's um, a summary of you know what we're doing regarding this um, on this topic. Yeah, so I, um, this is an overview of the false data injection attack we're looking at, like our perspective of this attack. We've decided to categorize them into two. The first um, kind of false data injection attacks we're looking at will be attacks that um, affect control commands originating from the control center and false data injected into measurement data sent from the control center to remote field devices. So basically the figure and you know the arrows are just intuitively what we considered as entry points for these attacks. We assume that uh, from the control center to uh, substations, let's say that would be like control data. It could be commands, it could be any kind of data. Um, a malicious adversary could just um, penetrate the network within that point and add uh, false data within the actual data that the controller intended to send. And then the other, um, so the next uh, point of entry that we're looking at is within substations, right? The IEDs just run like off the shelf computing infrastructure. And if um, a malicious adversary gets access uh, to any of these devices, they could um, easily inject data such that when um, RTUs are sending data back to the SCADA regarding, say, um, measurements uh, taken from sensors and things like that, they might end up um, communicating false data or data that um, just has anomalous signals along, um, along with it. Yeah, so again, just about false data injection attacks on on um, control commands, these have the potential to alter the topology of the power grid. And I think uh, this has been talked about several times. Yeah, these are like attacks. For instance, um, co control data from the SCADA would be um, a command uh, like maybe instructing a substation uh, to, um, to disconnect transmission lines or to to increase generation at certain points uh, within the power grid. Now, if this command is malicious and maybe some fields within the command are changed to say, maybe um, if it say drop one transmission line and suddenly changes to disconnect two or three transmission lines. So when that happens, that is something that could potentially change uh, the topology of the power grid and the consequence can be undesirable. But when it comes to 
attacks on uh, measurement data. These ones uh, affect mainly state estimation because so uh, the power grid uses a state estimator to uh, just for information regarding the operation condition of the power grid. And the way the state estimator works is that um, sensors and, you know, uh, sensors are read off or uh, sensory data is sent to the RTU and then from there it goes on to the SCADA. And then based on this data, the state estimator, uh, run, uh, uh, the state estimation algorithm uh, produces what it believes is the operating condition of the power grid and based on that makes decisions. Now if these attacks are carried out simultaneously, while um, while the control commands are disrupting the topology of the power grid, a measurement, I mean a measurement data full state injection attack could affect the feedback that the control center is getting. So it can in a sense uh, kind of mask what's actually going on um, within the network. Um, yeah, I hope that makes sense. But that's where we're coming from when we're looking at uh, false data injection attacks. So, yeah, so for, again, my, my project, uh, I was specific about the, the attack model that I'm using. We're looking at, we're assuming the two attack points that um, I talked about right here when data is being transmitted to the substation and when feedback data is being sent back to to the SCADA. So we assume that adversaries can penetrate uh, can penetrate the control center's local area network and uh, disrupt some of the control commands. And then we also assume that within substations, IEDs can be penetrated by attackers. But there is one source of there is one source of um, legitimate data, which is the actual like the actual devices or the actual sensors and actuators within substations. We assume that these ones have been um, they've been sufficiently encrypted, or they have um, or they're just this physical protection that. Um, that prevents uh, the adversary from accessing this. So we, uh, agents have access f uh, to a good basis of, I mean a basis for correct data for them to do whatever they need to. Now, um, so this is what we propose. Deploying um, software-based agents at substations. Now we assume there is some form of communication among adjacent subsystems that these agents can use to send um, signals among themselves, and then uh, these agents will use this, informa uh, this infrastructure to interact with IEDs and the RTU and, you know, run whatever distributed algorithm they need to run for whatever objective. So the figure is basically still, it's still just um, the figure that I started with. Um, if we added an agent within the substation, and this agent somehow or another was able to access uh, data from RTUs and IEDs um, and and be able to just even process this data. Uh, if it's a command, be able to extract the semantics of this command um, in a sense that what exactly is this command required to do and then maybe run set estimation and then run a consensus algorithm to share its findings with its neighbors. And so these agents can um, these agents can generate a lot if they realize an anomaly. So, so this is the strategy. Um, so, yeah. So that's um, uh, that's just an overview of what it would look like. Sorry. Um, all right. So within the agent, we assume. Huh. Okay. Someone asked a question, but I hope it's okay for me to answer questions later. I'm just gonna proceed with the presentation. Um, yeah. So this is just an overview of what I'm calling an intelligent agent. Uh, so it's basically, 
Well, I'll answer that later. Thank you. So um, uh, basically, the intelligent agent would have modules that can collect data, process data, and make decisions, and then implement whatever decision they've made. So an agent, by definition, simply interacts with its environment, and it's a, it, it interacts with its environment and in a, in a sense that whatever input we have into the agent is something it collects from the environment, and whatever output is something that um, the environment can use. So inputs, it could be data from the RTU or PMUs or data from other agents, and then outputs could be um, uh, state estimates, measurements, um, intrusion detection results, and things like that. So um, the algorithm suite would basically have all the algorithms this agent would be permitted to run. Um, it could be things like attack detection, state estimation, um, and then consensus just to share um, data with uh, with neighboring agents. So, so that multi-agent system uh, detect uh, false data injection attacks on two fronts. On the one end, it would detect um, false data against measurement data. Then on the other end, it would detect false data against um, against against commands or rather control signals coming from from the SCADA. So, um, if we consider the PAN network as a substation, with I mean as a like a graph with a certain number of substations, and then we have the same number of agents uh, deployed per substation. Now, so the agent at each substation can, using the data within each substation, uh, come up with the state estimate. So basically, equation one um, is just the equation an, an agent would use to uh, an agent would use to um, to determine its state estimate based on the data it has collected. So we assume the measurement vector zi is just collected by polling data. And then it runs a, uh, so uh, the state estimation algorithm, it, uh, it would run a state estimation algorithm to determine x, uh, xi, which is the state. But hi is basically the topology of that logical partition of the power grid that the agent creates. Because earlier we had mentioned that these agents are able to see at least up to the neighboring substations. And based on that, they can have uh, even just a small, um, like just like a, a small view of the power grid and aggregate the rest of the power grid. So this edge is that topology corresponding to just that partition of the power grid. So if an attack, so uh, for the power grid, generally has defenses against false data injection attacks. And uh, one of the defense mechanisms is um, it uh, runs a, uh, it runs a, what they call a, uh, well, there's two things. There's chi-squares, and then we have uh, just running the L2 norm um, to determine if there's data that falls outside a certain bound, and that's how um, the power grid normally detects attacks, but then there's a class of false data injection attacks that evade detection if it's done in that fashion. So we're saying if we do distributed state estimation, uh, false data injection attacks against measurement data will not uh, pass this bad data detection. As a result, we would like greatly, greatly reduce um, the success rate for um, false, data false, false data injection attacks when we do state estimation um, at the agent level for just a small section of the power grid. So basically, attacks that may evade detection at the control center satisfy equation two. It, uh, the, it said that attack is within the image of the topology matrix. So what happens is with distributing the power grid or having agents uh, running state estimation for small sections of a power grid is that the edge is too small that it's not possible to have to have um it's not possible to have an image uh, for edge that will pa that uh, to have an image for edge that would uh, pass false data detection at one substation along with all other substations so the idea here is partition the grid and if the attacker succeeds in even getting 
an attack, an attack vector that is the image of a certain section of the grid, that same image won't pass for another section of the grid. So um, I hope that makes sense. But that is the idea we're using for a multi-agent system for detecting false data injection attacks against measurement data. So on the other hand, for control commands, huh? So here we're looking at, um, right, so uh, equation one is basically a uh, state estimate, uh, state estimate, uh, it's like an equation for state estimation in the power grid. So we're assuming that um, at every, at every um, subsystem created by an agent or at, every, at each substation, an agent has access to the correct state estimate at that time. So based on equation one, that is what ideal is the correct estimate. So if data comes in from the control center requiring like a change, and we've collected this change in a vector SI, so it might be like um, something comes in or information comes in instructing um, instructing um, like a substation to maybe increase generation by a certain amount or drop a transmission line of a certain capacity. So the agent would collect these details, this information and collect it in vector SI. So, and then simulate an estimate of what X would look like after running after again doing state estimation. So basically equation three, that's how state estimation is done normally. But then at equation four, the agent is trying to simulate what the estimate would look like if they are to add SI onto what they currently have. Now based on the result XI, the agent will compute ZSI. So with emphasis on simulating. So this simulation takes place in a matter of uh, milliseconds. Uh, if the average has been within 10 milliseconds, an agent can be able to determine ZSI. And if ZSI is determined to put the power grid in an insecure state, the agent has the the agent has enough time to generate an alert um, preventing this command from being executed. So that is the idea of distributed detection of um, false data injection attacks against um, control commands. So yeah, it's actually built upon from a centralized strategy that Huey and Dr. Kalbachek had worked on. So, but this is the idea when doing it at a centralized level, it's faster and uh, yeah, and then it eliminates all those, um, all the details associated with a centralized control. Yeah, so at each agent, um, state estimation, and then a false data injection attack detection has been done. But then this is this has been done for just parts of the power grid. In other words, there's different results uh, from different agents, and who knows? Maybe if the agents, if there was, if someone was looking at the power grid as a whole, the data that these agents have obtained is inaccurate. So that's why to unify the result and to come up with a consensus or like to come up with a consensus. We decided to um, use the consensus problem that's commonly used um, within um, control systems in the power grid. So um, what consensus basically means is agents agree on a value. They, they reach a common consensus, they reach a common value. So it's basically said that if agents keep updating information based on information from their neighbors, they will reach an agreement. They will get to a certain point where they'll agree to a certain value. So using that idea again, we, um, we, we enable agents share information and the information they share basically is the result. So when a command comes from the control center, it doesn't go to every agent. It just goes to one agent. So how do all the agents get this information? If they do a consensus, they will all have uh, equation seven right here is the value that the agents will um, arrive at when they get to steady state. So the challenge with, with consensus algorithms is that they can be slow and, and things like that. So the, but then um, uh, the weight, um, let's see if I, I didn't do that. Okay, so in equation six, the value AIJ is basically like the, the weighted value of, 
uh, the weighted value for updating agents. So just properly designing this weighted value can speed up this um, algorithm. This algorithm. So uh, it's been well studied, and there's a particular way that the weight can be designed that the algorithm can um, converge within um, a short time, within like a, um, a finite time. So in fact, we'll, I'll later show you the result that our algorithm, depending on a computational infrastructure, can um, can um, converge in under like 100 milliseconds. So yeah, so summarily, this is what I've been talking about. So basically, at every agent, we have, um, well, so we decided to design this as a discrete system so that, because a discrete system really, it counts the iterations it takes to converge, right? So you can vary that actual time that each of the samples takes to come up with, uh, based on your computational resources. Those will determine the actual time that um, your algorithm would converge. So at each sampling time, uh, all the agents start from an initial value. And uh, so what happens at each agent and at each iteration is that they run concessors. That's uh, line three of the algorithm. And then um, and then after they've, they've run consensus, based on the data they get from their from their neighbors, they will run another state estimate, and then they will again check if, um, they'll again uh, double check if this state estimate they're coming up with lies within the acceptable, the allowable operation range of their system. So um, if agents do this at every iteration, when they converge, they will all know if um, whatever, any new command, is going to put the power grid in an insecure state, and they'll all know if um, if um, uh, if there's been any uh, tampering with the measurements at any of the subsystems that they've created. Because again, we mentioned earlier that agents partition the power grid into logical um, partitions. So that's basically the algorithm that each agent would run. And um, yeah, so. Just to, um, again, to validate whatever we did, we used for false data injection attacks against measurement data, we used the IEEE 9-bus um, system, 14-bus and 30-bus systems. So we randomly just, um, so we randomly generated a, a thousand attack vectors. These attacks cannot be detected by the main uh, power grid. Um, by the main um, state estimator. These are like the false data injection attacks that are successfully within the image of the, uh, the topology matrix of the main power grid. So yeah, we show that uh, the first figure actually shows the detection results at each agent. Okay, so it's clear that not all agents will be able to detect attacks if they are treated as individuals. But if we run a consensus algorithm and unify or coordinate the results of these agents, every single false data injection attack can be detected by the agents if um, yeah, they have a way to coordinate um, the results, their you know, own results to their neighbor. So the first figure just shows the results at individual agents. And then the next figure we have shows um, results when agents decide to share data with one another. So uh, like I said, the uh, like an undetectable attack, the probability of it happening is uh, less than 0 0.01. So yeah, that's for, and that's for false data injection attacks against measurements. So for, uh, now for false data injection attacks against commands, we use the, IEEE uh, 118 bus uh, system and then the 39 bus system. So we simulated uh, the systems using MAT power. So agents continuously run set estimation and update their neighbors uh, again via consensus. And then we uh, looked at two attack cases. One was where agents randomly um, maybe send, uh, like we simulate uh, an attack that causes transmission lines to be disconnected. 
So the first uh, case, in the first case, the attacker would just randomly try to drop transmission lines. And then in the next case, he would target specific transmission lines. This is assuming he knows um, the topology of the system and he knows what transmission line carries what, which one will inflict the most damage. So basically, those are the attack scenarios we looked at. Now, um, so yeah, basically after doing all that, just taking an average of how well the system works, it detects 96% of Uh, it depends, uh, it, it's 96% of um, success rate. So um, I just got a question pop up about how is consensus used for state estimation? Consensus is not used for state estimation. It is used to coordinate state estimation results at agents. So basically whatever, um, so basically after agents have come up with their own how after agents have um, computed their state estimates, then they use this to share with their neighbors. And then they will come up with, they, they have a, a benchmark, like a threshold, beyond which they will determine that now the PAG is under attack. But consensus itself is just for information sharing, not actual state estimation. Well, so, yeah, so basically, this it, so for the random attacks, the 118. Um, so random attacks. This is uh, the first. Uh, let's see the green uh, 39. Uh, okay. So uh, let me finish. I I got another question. Let me first. Um, I'm about to finish this, and then I will answer the question. They're they're throwing me off. Sorry. Now. For random attacks, um, yeah, so the, um, this figure, the first figure, is basically random attacks. Now, for the 39 bus system, that's the green. It just shows uh, the rate of success of random attacks. If an attacker randomly just throws things at the power grid, so that's basically what would happen. Um, so the x-axis is the number of transmission lines and the 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 y is the is the percentage of the attacks um, that are successful. Oh yeah, so for the 39 bus system, we see that random attacks. The moment the attacker gets to seven um, transmission lines, he's um, he's like taking down the. It's like the 100 percent, almost 100 percent success rate for random attacks. When it comes to the, 118 bus system, um, his rate of success actually starts from 10 and even if he takes down 10 transmission lines, it still stays at, you know, like 50 something. So uh, it doesn't affect that much Yeah, because of like the sheer size of the system. It has, uh, has quite a bit of um, transmission lines. So now with the multi-agent system in place, uh, the block would be the rate of, um, detection, like the rate at which, again, the rate at which attacks would be successful if we had multi-agent system in place preventing attacks from being, uh, mean preventing commands that uh, would potentially put the power grid in an insecure state from being um, executed. So that's uh, the block is the 39 bus system and then the one that I have in Cyan is the 118 bus system. So if we had agents, uh, you know, uh, if we had agents just preventing this from being um, executed, that would barely have, you know, successful um, attacks. So here on the other side, it's basically the same idea, but this time it's targeted attacks. The attacker knows, you know, how to inflict maximum damage. So you can see even for, for their 118 bus system, even just three buses can have like a, a, an 80% um, success rate, and then uh, for a, again at some point you can just be successful every time from nine to ten, um, from nine to ten, from nine to ten um, transmission lines. As long as he knows exactly what transmission lines to affect. So, 
Yeah, and then again, when we with the multi-agent system in place, we see that the rate of success uh, greatly, greatly goes down. So that uh, this uh, mass-based um, intrusion detection strategy um, is is quite successful when detecting um, this type of attacks. So for the consensus algorithm that um, that the agents use to share data um, among themselves, this is just an idea of, of what happens. Like each agent has its detection results, but it needs to communicate to the rest of the agents. So on these figures, the 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 x-axis is the number of iterations, and the y-axis is uh, well the values they're dealing with. So they will so for the 39 bus system again because of the number of agents it will converge within in under 100 iterations while for uh for the 118 bus system it's uh, about 100 maybe going to say 180 iterations so um that's number of iterations again we modeled it like that so that that like the number of iterations it takes for a big system is independent of well, I guess it's a factor, but then it will be greatly determined by the the capacity of the computational infrastructure in place. So basically, it's just this is the formula for computing how much, uh, how long it takes for these algorithms to converge. And for the 39 bus system, we had convergence in. So we assume again that just we made assumptions about the maybe the communication link that we might have. We might have we have one of like uh, 10 Mbps or 100 Mbps, no, let's say 100 Mbps is our communication, is our speed of communication, and then maybe each agent needs, so NT is the transmission capacity of the channel, right? And then phi i is the, is the number of bits of information that each agent is sending. And then um, NI is the number of iterations, and then um, NB is, um, I think it's, uh, it's, when I say it's, the, well, I forget what NB is, but when we compute the, um, um, we compute uh, how much it would take for this algorithm, how long it would take for this algorithm to converge, and that's the time for each of them, and it's all, this is uh, 0 0.001 seconds, this is like, uh, it's like one millisecond, and then for the 118 bus system, it takes um, it's taking it's taking 10 milliseconds. But we are assuming your your um, communication link um, has a capacity of like 100 Mbps. I mean, you can even bring it down to 10, and uh, the um, and the performance of this consensus algorithm would still be acceptable. So yeah, but then. I mean, it has the potential to be faster. Uh, yeah, and then we tested just consensus with even bigger buses. Uh, at some point, a consensus algorithm will always converge. Uh, they they will converge at an average of like 200 um, uh, 200 iterations, uh, regardless of how much the system uh, scales. Because intuitively, we all know that they will. Uh, they uh, at steady state they converge to the average of the global value. The, uh, that's what they call the consensus value. They converge to the average of the global information. So yeah, that's um, what I have for consensus. And then now just to recap, I have uh, we've introduced a uh, distributed false data injection attack framework based on multi-agent systems, and then we've demonstrated how agents use a limited amount of information to detect attacks and coordinate their results using uh, consensus-based information exchange algorithms. And then we evaluated, uh, so, and then for future work, we just want to evaluate whatever, you know, we're looking at in a realistic power grid environment, because we used um, MAT power for simulation and yeah, so mad power it's really just data sets and then but we wanna do this using like real time data that's um yeah, that we don't have much control over. So yeah, that's it. Um and yeah, any questions?
Any questions? Reminder to folks to take yourself off mute if you uh, if you have questions to ask. Go ahead. Uh, Thank you for the interest. We have a question in Illinois. Go ahead. Um, all right. Um, going. Thank you for the interesting presentation. Other question: Since your uh, attacker can attack the control command and the management, uh, have you considered the attacker can also uh, have some intrusion against your consensus algorithm? Since you rely on consensus algorithm for the detection. Um, yes. So, yeah, it can be attacked, definitely. Uh, but, um, yeah, I'll put that down as future work, um, <laughs> improving the consensus algorithm, making it more robust against attacks. But, yeah, it can definitely be attacked. Yeah, and uh, I think someone um, asked if uh, noise is modeled, and uh, no, it's not. So random is in a sense that uh, the agent is just um, affecting, uh, like maybe we'll say random, random transmission lines within the power grid. So yeah, so we haven't uh, modeled noise at all. Uh, that's sort of, how do you um, derive what you call your logical partition, and how does that relate to the physical topology of the system? Well, so it would basically be, um, let's see, uh, at a substation, right? Um, at, at a substation, it's basically whatever is terminating at that substation. So that is how the partition would be created. For instance, it would be any transmission line that's um, come flowing into or out of the transmission link. That would be that section of the power grid is what would constitute um, that uh, partition. Okay, so that is both a physical and a logical partition. Um, yes. Any other questions online? Any other questions in the room? Great. Thanks, Esther.